Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a new secret printer that I've been working on. Um, my Patreons and my YouTube members have already seen this printer uh, about a month or so ago, um, but time has passed now and I want to show it off to the rest of my uh, channel members. So if you are interested in seeing early designs from me, if you're interested in supporting projects like this, definitely check out my Patreon down below or become a YouTube member. Uh, you will get early access to seeing uh, designs that I'm working on and there will be some models and perks and things like that that will be coming out onto Patreon and to YouTube members uh, only. So if you're interested in supporting the channel, it really goes a long way. These printers are not cheap, especially prototyping, uh, you know, ordering parts, changing things, reordering. Um, it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of parts to, uh, you know, prototype something and to test things and, and that type of thing. So I really do appreciate it uh, to all my members and to all my supporters. So this is a cross gantry uh, 3D printer that I have been working on for quite some time. I have been focusing more on other types of printers outside Core XY. Uh, I'm kind of over Core XY. It's getting a little bit boring to me and I've just kind of um, got over the belt path of Core XY. It's just, I find it uh, a bit tedious to design for. You know, it's going every which way all that kind of stuff. I've already made one cro a couple cross gantry printers actually abandoned cross and my large cross gantry printer called Defiant. Now I think something like this will eventually replace Defiant and this is going to be my main cross gantry printer design. Not in this size of course. This is a small prototype that I'm working on. The size of this is not going to stay the same. This is this just allows me to see if the idea works and then I can actually set my uh, size once it's done. I do think I am going to target a 180 by 180 millimeter size. I think that's a sweet spot for a lot of 3D printers. Very useful size, but still small. This printer does use one piece plates to actually make the frame very rigid and precise. I'm trying to go for precision as much as I possibly can here. And that's the idea behind these um, plates here. So these plates are made out of G10. I'm trying to keep the prototype cost down as much as possible. Carbon fiber would be really great, but we're, we're wanting really just the precision of the spacing and everything. So G10 does suit this very well. I've had these cut by um, CNC Madness in Vancouver for my initial prototypes. It's really quick for me to get the parts and things like that. But in the future, I do want to have the ability for everyone to order these parts kind of anywhere they are in the world. So I am going to be working with PCB Way on hopefully making some inexpensive inexpensive frame sets for the actual design if this printer does come out of prototype phase. So I'd really like to thank at this stage PCB Way for sponsoring this video. PCB Way isn't just a PCB manufacturer. They do CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding. Let's take a look at their 3D printing service. Let's go ahead and upload a part for Cappy. This is the Dragon Burner mount. We're going to go ahead and choose a quantity of one. We can choose the type of material we'd like it printed in. We'll go ABS. We're going to choose black and let's go 40% infill. You can go ahead then and submit a request and it's just that simple. All right, so again, big thanks to PCB Way. Like I said, I am going to be working with them to get these plates affordable. There are a bunch of changes I still need to make to them so that they're cheaper to actually cut out. The biggest part about it is 
If you take a look at the top of this plate here, and I will get an up close view for you once we go over the printer a little bit more. If you look at the top of this plate, it's essentially a bunch of operations. All of these whole individual holes are a new operation and that costs money. You know, every time an operation is added to this, it increases the cost. So what I need to do is I need to make these holes slots essentially so that it's, I can get as much of this done in one cut as possible. So it's not doing so many operations. So that's what's gonna help bring the cost down. But I am very happy with the prototype so far. And like I say, once I fully finish this design and it's proven and I like it, I can then go to the next step, which is making it that 180 by 180 target. Um, the size of these plates shouldn't grow too much. So it shouldn't increase the cost by a whole lot. Uh, these are four millimeters thick. They're quite robust. And I think the printer looks really unique. And I think it's something just different, right? So I wanna bring you guys here in closer to this printer and we can talk about some design ideas that I have in mind. And of course, the reason why I'm putting this out on my channel is I would like feedback. Um, ask questions, provide feedback. I want some input on this printer. Like I say, it's a early prototype. It's not printing yet. I'm working on it in my spare time in addition to many other printers that I'm designing and updating and things like that. So let's take a closer look at this and, and see what makes this printer special. All right, so here's a up close look at my cross gantry design. We can see our three plates here, all one piece. I have basically made it so that all of the motors for motion are at the bottom of the printer. There's two main reasons that I'm doing this. Well, really it works out to being three, but the two main ones are, I'm trying to get the weight down low as possible to make the printer really stable. I also want to keep the um, top portion here very sleek and easy to enclose, right? So the whole idea behind this is the tool head that's going to be essentially going on to this um, gantry here is going to be Bowden so that I can actually put a plate over top and taking the motors out of the you know equation in the top here and bringing them down, I have much more room and spacing. Also a really, really big thing to note is if you look at how tall these motor shafts would have to be if I was mounting the motor on the bottom or on the top, you would need a unique motor that has a long shaft. Now, these are available, but they're not available to everyone. And one of my rules with designing 3D printers is use the most common parts possible. So I've brought the motors down here to the bottom. I'm using a simple coupler here, and I'm using a carbon fiber five millimeter shaft that runs all the way to the top. I don't expect to see any torque loss on this, as torque loss generally open only happens when you have twisting in these rods. These are carbon fiber, and there's very little weight on this gantry. We can see on the gantry here that I am using carbon fiber cross beams. I want to mechanically link the two sides of this axis together. I prefer not to rely on a printed part here. One, it's a quite a large part. I'm trying to make this easy to print with small printed parts that are, can be easily printed on a V0, on a Rook, on whatever you might have. So I'm trying to cut that down. If you did have a large printer, you absolutely could design a one piece 3D printed piece. But again, I'm trying to go for rigidity here and I'm trying to go for precision. So this is a three millimeter carbon cross beam here. There's also a three millimeter carbon cross beam on the bottom as well. Again, to link these two sides of the axes mechanically. Being this is a cross gantry design, we do have two motors for each axis. So we have a lot of torque available there and we have a very lightweight tool head. 
I am using MGN9C linear rails, and I am oriented them in their flat position. Again, so that I can mount everything nice and flat. You'll see pretty much everything on this printer is designed to lay flat. My linear rails on the outside are laying flat directly on this nice flat G10. I'm bolting my cross bases and sandwiching everything flat nice like that. So better look here at how this works. I'm also using relatively standard parts here. We're using just 20 tooth pulleys. We're using idlers here. I have designed a tensioning system using apex clips. This is very compact, works very, very well. You can see the adjuster on this side here. So we just put an M3 Allen in there to actually tension the belts. Everything fits in nicely here, and we have an Aplex clip here, which basically puts pressure on this belt. There are some teeth in the printed part here, which holds that belt in nice and tight. Again, I'm using aluminum standoffs here. And the whole reason I'm trying to use printed parts here, and you'll notice that the bearing does not go into the actual CNC part. The problem is I want to be able to adjust the tolerances of this bearing. Let's say someone's using another service other than PCBWay or other than a standard service and these bearing holes came out slightly larger, this entire top plate is now useless. If I actually locate the bearings into the printed part, it's much, much easier to just reprint this part with different sizes to accommodate the bearing. So. I'm trying to eliminate any sort of issues with how precise these plates are cut. And hopefully, if someone was wanting to build this printer, you could actually source these plates from whomever you want. Maybe you have a CNC or you have a service close by that can provide CNC services that are cheaper for you. Again, depending on where you are in the world. I don't want to assume you're in North America, right? I want this printer to be buildable by pretty much anywhere in the world. Now, in this current iteration, I am going with lead screw Z. So there's a lead screw on this side and there's a lead screw on this side for uh, the printed Z. Now, I'm most likely going to scrap that for the final design and I'm gonna go with a triple Z. We already have 2020 extrusions here that I can bolt linear rails to. so. I would want to go with a triple Z, I think. I'm gonna have an extrusion here, or a linear rail here, linear rail here, and then I'm gonna have a linear rail at the back for three independent stepper motors, and then we can actually have Z tilt. Again, this is meant to be a very high quality, nice printer with good print quality. So I wanna have the feature of Clipper Z tilt with three independent motors so that we can actually uh, tram that bed perfectly flat. If I do go with a 180 by 180 size, we can use a Annex K3 bed, which is nice. That's a nice metal plate, build plate that you can find on AliExpress. Of course, people could design and mod this to use a glass bed or whatever, whatever 180 millimeter bed they can find. For this prototype, being I've already had the plates cut and such, I most likely will just do the two Z motors with um, lead screws. And in this iteration, I actually have eight millimeter rods that are gonna support the, the bed on four corners. Again, kind of a design choice I chose for the prototype, but I'm most likely not gonna go forward with that on the actual 180 but please feel free to leave a comment below on like what kind of Z you would be interested in seeing on this printer. For this design, we have to use a mainboard that has eight drivers anyways, so we have the extra drivers to run three independent motors on the bottom. Um, again, I think I'm gonna go with, you know, linear rails and then possibly lead screws. So three lead screws for that triple Z. Just try to make everything rigid, but I could also do a belted Z as well in the triple form factor. I'm curious on your feedback and opinions. Um, I do want this to kind of be a collaboration and uh, see what all of you think. 
So essentially what's going to happen here is we're going to have our tool head and we're going to have a printed tool head here with a hot end, of course. Now, as far as cooling is concerned, that's another reason why I would like to go with a triple Z. If I can move the linear rails to these 2020 extrusions, this is now fully open and I can have some fans here for sheet cooling. So I can have a large fan here and I can have a large fan here that are blowing directly onto the printed part as it prints. This way I keep the tool head really, really compact and really lightweight. We're just gonna have a, a hot end here and a 2510 fan. That'll all that be on the hot end. Again, people can of course mod this as they see fit. One of the downsides, however, of cross gantry is your tool head design. It can't go in the center of this gantry. It has to be offset, so you do lose build area. This printer here is only a like 110 by 110 build area, this prototype. Again, trying to keep costs down, that type of thing. So we really have to maximize as much space as possible. Thus why I'm trying to do sheet cooling on this um, prototype, or at least that's what the idea I have in my head. So we'll see how it works out on this particular printer, because like I say, I'm gonna have a, a lead screw here to actually run the bed frame up and down. So I might have to have like a cooling fan on the back that's blowing over top of the bed. Again, we'll see how that goes, but the 180 version, I would like to have sheet cooling with two fans on each side and have a triple Z. So that's a quick overview for all of you on this design. I don't have a name for it. Um, however, I do believe this is going to replace my Defiant cross gantry printer, which came out a few years ago. Uh, it was definitely much bigger than this. However, there were some constraints with it being enclosable and all that kind of stuff. I do have some really interesting ideas um, for closing this. You can see I already have heat set provisions here to actually make some enclosures and some cool stuff like that. So once this printer is completed, I will post more videos on it. As long as I'm happy with the prototype, we'll go ahead and design more. So again, thanks everyone for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you all over on Discord.